Hey everybody, what's up? It's your old buddy Mike from Big Mike's Motor Pool, and today, uh, as usual, I brought something to the table, and in this case, it's a multi-fuel. Um, so what are we going to do today? Well, uh, first of all, we're going to we're going to forget all the wind you're going to hear because there's a lot of wind nonsense today. It's a, a day here, early March. Uh, we got some weather coming through, and it's just the only time I have to do this. But with this uh, video today, I'm going to show you the most in-depth and easiest to watch fuel density compensator bypass video that you've ever seen. And the reason I say that is because we have no steering column in the way, there's no heater box, no fender, no nothing. It's clear, straight shot right through here, and uh, I can get in there at nice angles, show you all kind of good stuff, and talk about why this is a problem. Um, and it is. It, it, even if yours is working correctly, and your density compensator is not a problem, you want to bypass it. You want to get it done. If yours looks like this, which I'll show you in a little bit uh, exactly how it looks, you're going to want to fix this because the fuel dilution problem was such a problem because of the density compensator that the government was changing a lot of these around when they were still in service. And uh, some of them got out, some didn't. But um, yeah, if it's not a problem now, it's going to be a problem. And you want to get, you know, nip that in the butt before you go and get a bunch of damage caused by fuel dilution. Uh, one thing I will tell you though, um, just because we go and bypass this does not mean that this engine is no longer multi-fuel capable. Okay, that's sort of a myth. The multi-fuel capability is all in the piston and cylinder head design. It has nothing really to do with this other than the density compensator gives it the most premium burn, I guess you could say, per BTU of fuel going through. So it may just not run as optimal as it would if that was connected. And I think that's why the government had some instructions on some stickers you may have seen. Some were floating around here that said diesel fuel only, and it said something about reconnecting it if you had to use it, was because if they had to run gasoline only, which again, I don't recommend that either, um, it would run a lot better with it uh, reconnected than it would bypass. I've run gasoline in a pinch um, with a bypass fuel density compensator, and it was uh, a gutless pig. And, you know, that's saying a lot for a gutless pig in normal circumstances. So... Um, but yeah, you can still be multi-fuel, you can still run your waste oil, which I don't recommend that either. But uh, I know some of you guys live by it and swear by it, so you do as you, own, you will. It's your truck, and uh, I'm not going to tell you anything otherwise. But um, yeah, let's. Uh, I'll get my ladder out so I can get up here, and we'll get some good shots. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get this uh, bypass, and I'll show you the kit that we offer now at www.bigmikesmotorpool.com that's going to help you get this bypass quickly and easily. So first things first, before we get started, let's introduce to you the fuel density compensator bypass kit. As you can see, it comes with a length of tubing, obviously brand new, and we have some small parts here. Now, for the sake of production, um, I did not have the elbow here, and I did not have the clamp here yet. Waiting on those, but they should be here anytime. So I used uh, some used ones here I cleaned up, and we're just going to use it for the video. But in your kit, you will receive brand new parts. There will be nothing used in this kit at all, all brand new. So obviously we have the elbow and the clamp. Then we have new tube nuts for the uh, piece of tubing you got. Now these tube nuts you may notice on your old tubes when you take things off that the uh, little um, furls here come off separately. Originally when this was all put together they're connected just like that. Those break off once they're tight so that is correct. We have the anti-crush tube inserts. You also see we have two different size pipe plugs. And that about wraps it up for the kit. That's all you need to do this. So now that we know what's in the kit, let's go and take a look at what kind of tools we're going to need. Alright, so here's some tools you need. Some of these you definitely need, some you might not need. But uh, I brought them out just for, um, you know, to show you what you could do in this event to maybe make things go a little smoother. Uh, the most important tools you need are going to be your wrenches, 9 16 and 7 16 you probably could do the whole job with just those two, but it might not be so pleasant. If you have line wrenches, even better. They're not necessarily needed, but uh, line wrenches, um, you know, they'll keep you from rounding things off and, you know, working with this brass stuff. Um, you have a ratchet with an extension and a 9 16 socket. Um, the, the extension length isn't critical. Um, that's just the first one I grabbed, so you could use probably a 3 inch if you wanted to. It's uh Really, you might not even need an extension, but it's going to make uh, things more pleasant. Um, these tools here you may or may not want to have on hand. Uh, you don't necessarily need them. We have our compressed air. We're going to be using to blow out uh, 
the, the uh, fittings. I like to loosen them and then clean them and blow everything off as I'm taking it apart just to keep dirt from getting in where it shouldn't. So that's also why we have the wire brush. Uh, we you know, scrub them down as we're taking things apart. We've got a pair of channel lock adjustable pliers. Those, you know, that's not the correct way to do things, but the one fitting you may just end up wanting to use those. It may just make your life easier than trying to fight with it with a wrench. You're not reusing that particular fitting anyway, so it's not a big deal if you destroy it. And last thing on the table you'll see here is a razor blade. The reason that's here is when we put these kits together, um, sometimes time constraints, we don't always cut the most cleanest, straightest edge on the tubing. Uh, you may or may not need a straight edge with this stuff. Uh, you probably can get away with something that's not particularly square. But if you want to square your tubes up, you can do it with a little razor blade. Just, just chip it up a little bit on the end and get your... Uh, your square nice even end so that that wraps it up for tools that I so far and uh, let's get started and I'm going to show you what we have on this engine so I mentioned uh, that some of these got out and some didn't and it's funny you know I got um, let's see one two three four five six complete trucks here and I got this engine here and all of them uh, out of the six complete trucks only one has been bypassed the rest of them are still hooked up um, so, you know, that, uh, tells you how much got out, you know, just a, a percentage. So you definitely check your truck to see if you have, uh, been bypassed or not. So we're going to start with, uh, over here, this is the feed line. Okay. So that line there, usually what they would do in the government setup, when they would do it, they would just stretch that out to where it's got to go. But in this kit, we're going to completely, um, replace that. And you're also not going to be able to turn this back to uh, having that density compensator running ever again unless you save your parts and put it back. Um, in the government uh, design, they would loop hoses back and forth, and that was so you could just unhook and reuse it. But uh, we're not going to do that. Most people, uh, you're not going to do it ever again. If you're, you know, having this truck for, you know, a bug out vehicle, maybe you might want to keep the parts. Maybe you might not want to use this kit. But if you want to do a kit with extra length hoses, we can set you something up. Just uh, email me and I can get you uh, different hose pieces to go with your kit if you want to do it the way the government did with loops. But anyway, so you see we have that line coming down. It comes to this T right here. And out of that T, a line comes around and it goes to your hydraulic head. Okay, this is the first part we're going to uh, end up taking apart. So in the new kit, we're going to start up here with a new line. We're going to come down, skip right past this, and bring it right directly to here. That's where your piece of uh, line is going to go to. You're going to totally do away with this T, and one of the pipe plugs, the larger one, is going to go into that location. Okay? So the next step, you see back here, there is another elbow fitting. That's going to come completely out. That hose comes around. I may have to move to uh, get you a better shot. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. So here's a better shot of the line coming from the T. You see it just goes right around the back side of your hydraulic head and goes over to the 90. See? Right there. There's your 90. Follow it around all the way down to here uh, that's where your return line if this truck had not been stripped of injectors the return line would be plugging into the bottom of this uh t configuration here okay so this fitting right here this this t gets replaced with a 90. okay and then over here that 90 gets plugged and you could reuse that 90 if you wanted to we give you a new one in the kit so um, you know, that way you have nice new pieces. There's no worries about just taking this apart and stripping it out and having issues. That's why we give you a new one instead of reusing this. The government would have had you reuse this and then take that T and loop the stuff back together and switch it over to here. And that's how you would retain your pieces on board to go and switch this back in the field if you needed to. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do this totally different. So let's uh, start taking some stuff apart. All right, so the first thing I like to do is remove the uh, main line here, my 16th wrench, and it comes apart. 
part pretty easy. This is all brass. Most of the time you're not going to have any kind of issues with stuff being stuck. The only thing you might see is somebody might have uh, you know, rounded one off at some point. And uh, see here what I was talking about how these are two separate pieces. They should be one when they're new. Can't really see it on here too well as to where the crack was, but if you really were to study that, you could see where the crack would be. Next, we're going to take apart this line. Same deal, just unscrew with a 9 16 Comes out nice and easy. And you're going to have fuel coming out of here. It's going to get all over the place, so you may want to have a drain pan ready if you want. Next thing we're going to work on is this fitting to get that removed and the associated line that goes with it which connects here and also here. So again just take the line off, 9 16 nothing fancy going on here. Just get it done, get it out of the way. If you're lucky, you know, most of the time these things you can undo by hand once they're cracked. Sometimes they, you know, maybe crudded up and just might want to fight you and then you got to wrench it the whole entire way. It also depends on the last guy that worked on it if he made the lines correctly or not. Yeah, we're just going to pop this thing out of here. As I said, you may want a line wrench, you may not. I'm choosing not to use them just because, you know, it's easier for me to work with this. And it's coming apart nice and easy. You know, another trick you could do too, if you want it to make this a little bit easier. If you're not planning on keeping any of these parts to reuse, you could just cut this line. And if you cut it off, say right here, you know, you could just get rid of the line and then unscrew these a lot quicker than you could trying to... This one's a little sticky, you know, it's not... So is this one. But it would make it easier, but you really don't have to do it. Next, take this guy out. Now with this one... We're going to, see that was a little bit tight. This is another one you may want to use a uh, pair of pliers on, but the wrench got it pretty easy. And you can fit this wrench around multiple points in this. This was designed to be wrenched on. As you can see, it fits between the two uh, 90 degree ports. So most of the time you can get it cracked loose and it's not a problem. All right, so we got a little bit of crust on the edge of it, but not a big deal. The next step would be to put in your large pipe plug. Now, just because I'm trying not to destroy this nice thread sealant, we're only going to thread it in that much. Normally, you run that thing in there, tighten it down, um, you know, get it good and good and tight, and you're you're all set. Okay. Now, the line would be sort of next to put your new line on, but just so we have a little bit more room to work. We're going to forego that and take apart the fitting back here and its associated line. Okay, so I have the camera fixed up here so we can see what we're doing. And again, we're working on this fitting and line, which follows all the way over to here at the bottom of this T-assembly. So we're going to try and get this one off. Now this one's a little bit more tricky. There's not a lot of room to swing a wrench. So you just kind of got to make do with what you got. Again, this might be a spot where... The trick I mentioned about cracking it loose and cutting the line off would be beneficial because uh, then you can get in there and just spin the fitting out. But this one's coming off pretty easy, so we're gonna we're gonna run with it. And once this is off, we don't have too much to worry about. Everything else is wide open, so to speak. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing on the other end of it down here, and you're not gonna see this too well, but I'll take you over and show it to you after we get the fitting out. So we're going to uh, we're going to remove this 90 degree fitting. Again, you can scrub it down, you don't have to. It's um, not super important. The most important one you really should have wanted to clean was this one, which I forgot to clean. It doesn't matter on this engine, it's a parts motor, so it's uh, you know not a big deal. But um, you're going to have fuel going back through here not so much here actually not have any going back through there because it's going to be plugged off 
We're going to try to crack this one loose and it's coming nice and easy, which yours probably will too. But again, this is in one of those funny spots where it's not the most pleasant to work. So, you may want to do stupid stuff like, uh, you know, maybe sticking the wrench in the threads if you're not going to reuse it. Really, at this point, if you're not reusing it, whatever gets the job done is what, you know, you need to do. Just whatever makes your life easier. You get to a certain point, and then you can work it out of there. This is a little bit tighter, but it's going by hand now. All right, so we got that guy out. And then in that position goes your small pipe plug. I'm going to just spread that in a little bit. Just like the other one, because we're going to take this back out, and some lucky person is going to end up with these parts from this video in their density compensator bypass kit. Okay, so that's plugged off. I'm going to take you another angle here and show you what uh, a few other things we've got going on. Okay, so to recap, we got our plug in the back, the large one. Got our plug in the top, I should say the side. And you can tell, um, hard to see a little bit of the angle, but which one it is. There's a bolt with the um, safety wire through it. It's in front of the bolt with the safety wire, just if you're confused, if you're looking on your truck to see if it's been done, and if you're wondering if it's done this way or another way. Let's see, let's see anything back here, maybe not. All right, so that, that about does that. So now we're gonna get down over here, and start removing this fitting. All right, so this one's another tricky one that we're going to uh, try to get off of here and you might be tempted to try and leave that hose on there and twist this thing off but it's uh, it's going to be more headache than it's worth unfortunately there is not a lot of room on this side to work but you can make it make it work so we're going to try our best here to see what we can do crack this guy loose let's see where it goes but that's the uh, downfall here we do not have much room to swing so you might have to get crafty with it, just to get it off of there. But luckily, once it's done, you're not going to have to fight with this again, because you'll never have another one in there. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to hit you guys in the head. Things happen, especially uh, around this place, Disaster Central. All right, so we're going to... That's going nice and easy, thankfully. Thread that guy out of there. As soon as I can get in a better position. There we go. Alright, there she is. It's out. So now, you can, as I mentioned, use this wrench to try and spin this thing out. Especially if you're going to reuse it, it might not be a bad idea to try and salvage it and do it, you know, in a way that isn't destructive. But even sticking it in the uh, port isn't so much fun. So this is where our pump pliers come in, our channel locks. We're just going to use these. I don't know if any of you guys are like me, but... It really irritates me when I see someone trying to use these and they use them in the wrong direction. That's the right direction to use channel lock pliers. You put them on here like this, all you're doing is fighting yourself. You know, when you're trying to break something free. At least this, now it's loose so I can flip back and forth and use them as needed just to get in the spot I want to be. But when you're taking something off, you start here. You don't uh, start the opposite direction. Now this one, you do want to clean this. So we'll get it somewhat down, and then you can get in there scrub it. I'm not going to go too crazy because it's, yeah, it's a parts motor. Anyway, you scrub it clean, take it all the way out. All right, so there's that. Now we're going to go ahead and put this elbow back in. Okay, this is the elbow that's going to be in the kit that you could have reused if you wanted to, if you're trying to keep your uh, original parts. Uh, one other thing to mention, 
uh, you know this was in here and it's there's no it's not on this engine right now because it was taken apart but coming out of here is going to be the uh, fuel return from your injectors all right it's going to come you know out of this port and it's going to run over here and go up the side of the engine back up to your injectors it's not here um, just note that you're going to have to remove the injector return line uh, just from this fitting in order to do this operation so then this one you would put the elbow in here like so try and get it straight and started and do a couple cranks and you would uh, you know take that down uh, get it nice and tight you don't necessarily need to put any kind of uh, sealant on it um, the elbows I got coming, I can't remember if they have sealant or not. If you wanted to, you could use some Teflon tape. Uh, not really even necessary. These are uh, taper fittings, so the tighter you get it, the tighter the taper sticks. And it being brass, it'll smush together and be real nice and good. But if you feel better about it, you can always put the sealant on there or the tape. So then you just, you know, finish this off. And then your uh, original return line can go right into that. You don't need new fittings and you don't need a new line. Obviously, if you want to replace the return line, you know, I do have return line parts and return line in bulk. So we can definitely get you set up with that. Um, honestly, it may not be a bad idea just to go through and redo all of your lines just to uh, have nice new stuff, nice and fresh. So uh, nothing's cracked or broken. That's the problem. I've done a few of these and you end up breaking some of this stuff as you're working on it. And it's never fun, especially when you got to wait for stuff to arrive. And all the line that we sell is correct for fuel and is correct to spec recommended in the technical manual for this engine. It is not DOT airline. See a lot of guys recommending to use DOT airline and you know maybe it's fine, but um, if it was a uh, fuel line, it would say DOT fuel line, not airline. So we don't use airline. We use correct fuel line that we source out for these engines. So now, we're going to go and start putting together our line from the filter assembly down to the hydraulic head. So let's uh, see what we got to do for that. All right, so as I mentioned, we got the razor blade here. I already went ahead and did this one. You can just take and, you know, shave it up a little bit, you know, put it on a table, get it nice and, and square if you want. I don't think you even really need to. I don't believe it's super important to have a square end on this. But this line comes unassembled uh, because it's it doesn't really stay assembled unless you crank it down and make it tight so to assemble this line all you really do you take one of your nut and ferrule assemblies and you just get it on there now some of this sometimes you may have to go and, and fight with this a little bit um, it may be beneficial to take uh, you know a little bit of a bevel edge here with your razor blade you just put it on like that doesn't have to be any certain length. You can put it six inch, eight inches back if you want. It doesn't matter because you're going to, you know, push it up to where it's supposed to be when you put it in. Next, you put this uh, tube insert in to keep it from getting crushed. Now, you want to be careful with this because they fall right out. These do not stick in place until it's tightened because it crushes down on it and that's just a support so it doesn't overdo it. So you do that to both ends and then you start to put it together right on the on the uh, engine so let, let's uh we'll start with one end and then we'll put the p parts and pieces in the other end as we need it so we don't drop anything let's put it on so now we're going to install your fuel line onto the hydraulic head fitting so to do that we're going to take our tube and our nut put it together it doesn't really matter where this is at yet and you got your anti-crush insert put that in you bring the tube back down or the nut i should say back down it doesn't really matter exactly where because you're going to mess with this and it's going to go where it wants to go when it's in you want to do this one probably first because you can see a nice little bend in this tube from the factory and it doesn't like to go any other direction but the way it sits so if you put the other end on first up at the filter, you're going to fight with it a little bit more than you're going to fight with it here. Okay. Now, being that these are all new parts and nothing's been squeezed down, this might be a little bit tighter to work with 
when it's in this new condition as far as the nut over the top of the tube so you may want to use a wrench just whatever you whatever you do you want to be careful that you're not you're not cross threading this you can easily do that but just go by feel you can usually feel if it's not you know super hard from the get-go it's probably going in straight i'm only using the wrench to start it just because it's really hard to turn by hand on here now so you get a little bit a few threads in and that's where you kind of want to stop uh, the main reason is because you want this hose to, or this line to be able to move inside the fitting you don't want it to get tight yet um, that's going to give you some leeway as you're going uh, to connect it to the other side so you can twist this hose and maneuver it to wherever you want it to go to make it fit correctly so let's uh, take a look over here and see what we can do on the other end. All right, so we're looking here now at the fitting for the fuel filters. This is where the other end of this line goes. Um, and here you better put your insert in, and you see it just falls in there. You know, so that's a very loose fit, so be careful not to lose that in the process of this because working on it on the truck is a little bit different story than i'm doing it now and it does make it a lot easier to drop things and lose them things don't line up the way they should and uh see now this is a little bit of an issue you want to try and get this up as high as you can it's not important that it's all the way up high but it's going to make things a little bit easier you to get this started because now the tube is not bottoming out the nuts going to bottom out on the threads before the tube hits and the same thing with this one if it helps to start it with a wrench by all means do it up get it a couple threads in all right and then you're going to want to stop i mentioned a few times i'm stopping anyway just because i'm not going to go ahead and um, ruin the uh, material here all right, so we got that started it's left loose because you may have to manipulate this line slightly to get it to go where you want um you see we have it over here it's running underneath the filters and it's running right up here by this clamp and that's where you're going to connect your other clamp at you're going to take that uh bolt out of there put the clamp on and clamp this right to the same bolt now, on some engines, you're going to find that you may have connected right there the filter for your manifold flame heater if your truck is so equipped. If you don't want to bother with the clamp and trying to relocate the manifold flame heater filter, you don't really need to clamp this down. It's not going to move other than vibration. And to be honest with you, this one clamp isn't going to stop the whole line from vibrating. Um, it's just nice to have it there. You know to hold it down i'm just kind of particular about things and i like to have things how they should be but um, if it's too much trouble you can always leave that clamp out but it is in your kit if you so desire to use it so let's put that on and see how this is going to look okay so here's the bolt you want to use for your clamp you're going to attach the line with the clamp and this is a 9 16th wrench again like i said this might be a little bit of overkill extension you may not even need an extension if you're really hard for tools, you probably could even do this with the wrench, but no sense in fighting with things. Might as well just get the extension. Get in there and get it done. Simple as that. Put the clamp on it. Put your bolt right back in. Line everything up because it's going to move. And we're going to run it back down. Alright, and this, on trucks I've seen that have been bypassed, this is the correct orientation this one does stay on the bottom and this one goes on the top so you're good to go there and there's one other thing i want to show you and that is the line here where it's touching okay now you may not want to have this resting on here the vibration could chew a hole in it if you you know run it long enough but to fix that you can take the fitting up top and tighten it just a hair and that's going to kick it out all right so it's been tightened you see it didn't get tightened much all it did was just bring this out just a hair to keep it from resting on anything so now this line is good and free of any kind of uh, rubbing you know you'll tighten every, you know everything will be tightened up now is a good time to tighten it because now you're in your final position you can tighten all your fittings 
and your fuel density compensator, once you put your return line back on, if you haven't already done it, is now bypassed. That's the end of it. Um, really, really easy. You probably uh, watch this video, and this video is going to take longer than the actual job. You're going to get in here and just do this, and you know. So if you're kind of nervous about the project, don't be. Very, very simple stuff. Anybody with basic tools can do this. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but these uh, plugs are also uh, 9 16 and 7 16 for the small one. So nothing special there. But yeah, that's it. That's the uh, fuel density compensator bypass. Uh, very in-depth video where you can see everything. A lot of these videos are very hard to see what the guy's doing. Just because, it was, like I said, there's a truck in the way. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope it's informative and, uh, and has helped you. And if you have any questions, you know, always feel free to email me at bigmikesmotorpool at yahoo.com. Or you can always call uh, 609-894-4123. And I will put a link to this kit in the uh, description here. So you know where to purchase it at. And as always, uh, anything you need, parts or tech help... Feel free to check with us at Big Mike's Motor Pool, because we're always glad to help out any way we can, keep everybody rolling and happy. All right, thanks guys, have a good day.